Joining us live from the White House is Linda Douglas. She is the Director of Communications for the White House Office of Health Care Reform. Linda, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. What's the price tag of the President's proposal? Well, you know, it's hard to say because, and of course you have a Washington audience, so they'll understand this, or an audience that follows what goes on in the government. This has not been scored, that means analyzed by the, uh, by the nonpartisan uh, budget office, so it's really hard to put an exact price tag on it. But one thing that we are quite certain of is that everything, all of the changes are paid for. You know, this continues to be legislation that would reduce the deficit by $100 billion in the first decade, uh, you know, around a trillion dollars in the second decade. All of the changes based on other information that we've been able to use uh, make sure that it is paid for, and that's really the president's goal. And it was posted at 10 o'clock Eastern time this morning on your website at whitehouse.gov. One of the issues that's getting a lot of attention today is the ability for the federal government in conjunction with states to go after insurance companies that raise rates uh, at a higher level than you deem necessary. Can you explain how that's going to work? Well, you know, this is a very important authority that people really became aware of the need for something like this in the last couple of weeks. Certainly we uh, here who've been working on health insurance reform have been aware that there's a great need, but you saw the case out in California where uh, the insurance company, big insurance company, uh, was trying to raise rates on people who buy their own insurance in the individual market by as much as 39 percent. There are cases like this all over the country now. So what this would do was give the federal government the authority to watch what's going around uh, the country, uh, collect this data, uh, put it all in a central place, and work with state insurance commissioners uh, to see if those insurance increases are justified and maybe they should be blocked. You know, something like 20, 21 states uh, have insurance commissioners who really don't have the authority to go in there and do that themselves. So what this does is uh, give the federal government the ability to help the insurance commissioner uh, do the, the kind of enforcement that their consumers want in their home states. You also write about the so-called donut hole for Medicare recipients. What is that and what will be changed? Well, you know, there's a gap in coverage. It's a real flaw in the uh, otherwise a very important legislation that entitled all seniors to have coverage for their prescription drugs through Medicare. But there's a big gap in that coverage well, you know of props, several so thousand dollars so that hat. when you've had a high level of expenditures, all of a sudden you don't have any coverage. Uh, all of a sudden you're completely exposed and have to pay it out of your pocket. So what this does, the president's long been committed to this, is make it possible to close that gap so that eventually all of your prescription drug coverages, if you are covered by Medicare as a senior, will be covered. And this is, I cannot tell you, Steve, how important this is to seniors who literally find themselves not able to fill prescriptions, skipping doses, uh, you know, exposing themselves to illnesses because they are suddenly on the hook for thousands of dollars because they've fallen into that gap. Linda Douglas, uh, who is joining us uh, from the White House and uh, some other reporters also inside briefing uh, their respective networks on details of the health care proposal that the president put forth today. Is this a starting point for Democrats and Republicans on Thursday? Where is this leading? Well, that is a very good way to put it. That's exactly what this is. This is an opening bid. Uh, certainly the, uh, the Democrats, uh, the House and the Senate have worked very hard. They've That's passed right. and, uh, two bills that the president supports thing. that one, one meet his thing, goals uh, of lowering costs and uh, protecting uh, insurance uh, uh, people against That's insurance company abuses, uh, making sure that uh, the fiscal situation of the government is strong, reducing uh, the deficit. So these are very important goals that the president wants to achieve, uh, covering naturally uh, millions more people. He believes that the bills that were passed by the House and Senate accomplished that. Uh, we've uh, seen in his proposal today that he's proposing ways to bridge the differences between the House and the Senate. Then uh, what he wants to do is sit down with Democrats and Republicans and talk about what additional approaches could be applied to achieving the goals that I just laid out. Uh, he is very interested uh, in the approaches that the Republicans want to bring to the table. There are already many, many Republican ideas incorporated into these bills. And by the way, Steve, I want to mention that in the new proposal the president has rolled out, there are several uh, actual Republican provisions on waste and fraud and abuse, uh, trying to save money for the federal government, that he has incorporated already into his yeah. bill. Two things that are not in the legislation is put forth by the president, the so-called uh, Cornhusker kickback. What was that and why was it taken out? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Well, you know, that was, uh, that was uh, an agreement made with Senator Nelson of Nebraska to try to protect his state from additional costs of expanding Medicaid, that is the government program for covering low-income people. And what Senator Nelson was really trying to do was make sure that all states were protected from additional burdens as they try to cover low-income people through the expansion of Medicaid in their states. That's really what he wanted. Uh, and that is, in fact, what we wound up with uh, in the new proposal from the president. Uh, the, uh, you know, Nebraska will not be alone. All states now will have uh, tremendous relief from any additional burdens uh, in expanding Medicaid uh, to cover the low-income people in their states. Was a public option at all discussed as you put forth uh, new de details announced today? Well, you know, as you saw, this proposal uh, today uh, is one that goes to bridge the differences between uh, the Senate and the House. And, you know, look, the president has always said, we're not going to get everything we want. No one is going to get everything they want in something uh, as big and as important as trying to, you know, lower costs and protect Americans from uh, health insurance abuses. So this was not, as you saw, uh, in the new proposal. He, uh, you know, as, as he said, uh, didn't necessarily think that there were going to be, uh, you know, that that was going to be one of the ways that we would bridge the differences between the House and the Senate. Uh, but we'll see, you know, uh, we want to hear what the Republicans' ideas are when the president goes in to talk to them in this meeting. Uh, and let's see what comes out of it. Linda Douglas is joining us uh, from the White House. She is uh, the White House Communications Director for the Office of Health Reform. Let me ask you to uh, focus a little bit about the so-called Cadillac health care insurance plans. Uh, who would be taxed and where would the money go? Well, uh, this was uh, and continues to be uh, a tax on very high cost health plans so that the insurance company would have to pay a fee, not the person who's covered, but the insurance company would have to pay a fee on very high cost plans. And what the president's change has done is make it more possible to phase that in so that uh, workers all around the country, union workers, non-union workers, people who have very high cost plans uh, will be able to have this change, uh, the fee on the insurance companies phased in so that there is no change in the benefits that they're currently getting today. And additional changes we've made in that is to be sure that we're really getting at the plans that have the most costly benefits, not the most costly workers, so that there are, for example, uh, protections for older workers, and there are, you know, protections to be sure that, you know, the, that you're not going to be penalized if you're a worker in a high-risk profession. You know, sometimes that might drive up the cost of your coverage. So there are changes now that are made to protect older workers, high-risk workers. There's also going to be dental and vision benefits that will be exempted from the total cost of that plan so that won't be considered and that will go into effect several years from now uh, and will according to many economists who've looked at this have the effect of starting to change the behavior of insurance companies and put downward pressure on rising health care costs. And finally if you or your family opt out of any health care insurance uh, at what point Will you be penalized? Well, you know, there are all kinds of ways, first of all, for uh, Americans to afford health insurance. There are tax credits to help, uh, you know, tens of millions of Americans afford, on a sliding scale, to afford their health care coverage. Uh, there are hardship waivers for those who simply cannot afford coverage, whether their income is too low or whether the health costs are just too high and they can't afford the coverage. So there are hardship waivers for them. There are um, catastrophic plans. That's a very high deductible plans for for some young people to be able to buy on the market. So there are many, many protections uh, for affordability for uh, people who simply cannot afford health insurance. But let me just point out that, you know, when people don't have health insurance, uh, everyone pays for the cost of their care if they get sick. Right now, every American uh, family with health insurance through work is paying a hidden tax of $1,000 to cover the cost of caring for the uninsured. So that is something that would be remedied by uh, seeing that everybody uh, engages in the individual responsibility responsibility a requirement, but there are many, many protections on affordability. Linda Douglas joining us from the briefing room at the White House. She is Communications Director for the White House Office of Health Reform. Thanks as always for being with us. Thank you.